I left and I wanted to tell you guys and share with you the honesty, honest reasons on why I left Tanzania and why I'm not going back. I am leaving here and I'm going somewhere else. Um, and I don't recommend anybody else come to TZ, Tanzania at all. Two of the reasons that led us to the conclusion that we weren't gonna stay in Tanzania yeah. are business opportunities and immigration. When it comes to immigration, there are just things that they put up to make it more difficult for you to be able to stay. Yeah. Well. Brothers and sisters, utterly disappointed in Africa, in this particular African country. And I can understand. These are individuals who have uprooted themselves from their comfortable homes in the U.S. They've got family. And uh, to make your way to Africa obviously requires such commitment. And we really must appreciate where they are coming from. This is, this is difficult, this is difficult, and I totally get it. Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Africa, our business. We try our best to make the issues of the continent and diaspora relevant to you and to us, to make things work for our own benefit as African people, wherever we are. If you're here for the first time, do the magic, subscribe, like as well as ring that bell but let's get into the meat of this many african americans traveling to the continent are getting really disappointed and it appears the biggest challenge that they are facing is immigration are african countries really handling this properly freedom chasers lala and um and tyler obviously facing difficult times. Let's listen in and just have a candid discussion on some of the issues that face them that need urgent attention if Africa is to really make good meaning of the idea of the year of return or inviting our brothers and sisters to come back home, either to invest, to pilgrimage, or to relocate all together. Please check this out. When it comes to immigration, there are just things that they put up to make it more difficult for you to be able to stay. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've talked about it before that American passports, if you have an American passport, you have to leave every three months. Yeah. So that brings up a financial issue. How much are you gonna pay to leave? You're gonna take a plane, a train, a bus, what are you <laughs> yeah. gonna do? What hotel are you going to stay at? Do you have somebody you can stay with when you leave all of these times throughout your year visa? Yeah. And with that comes, you know, different scams. There's a lot of people who say that they can get you a visa stamp for whatever. And we've just heard of a lot of people losing a lot of money yeah. doing that. And also, you don't want to be doing <laughs> things that are probably not like above board when you're messing around in another country. Yeah. Nobody wants to see what a Tanzanian <laughs> prison is like. We've also heard stories of couples going to the airport and finding out that their passport or their stamp isn't stamped correctly and end up having to leave and given a certain amount of time to leave, which can make it very difficult for people because mm -hmm. like we know, we're not going out there. The diaspora a lot of times not going out there with a lot of money, so. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, got a place and you got furniture and whatever yeah. and then you go to travel or anything and you get there and they're like, oh, your stamps aren't right. Yeah. You have this much time to leave. Okay, well, how do you sell your stuff? How do you, yeah. what, what do you do? You know, it just makes a problem. Yeah. Or they just charge you a whole bunch of money that you have to pay all at once while you're at the airport right. just to leave, which is very right. inconvenient right. and not suitable for us. Like if you want to stay here just to touch ground in Africa, you know, then yeah, come to TZ to get that continent out of your system first time dropping down you know, do it. But after that, it's a no for me. It's a no, and I feel like it should be a no for everybody else until they get their stuff together. For one, the visa. Staying here, if you see anybody that was here a long time, they're stuck here, 
They never go anywhere else to a different African country or back home to the United States to visit, nothing. So if that's the life you want, go ahead and come into the, it's perfect. Now, um, if you're wanting to go back home because you need a job and to get some money, go back and forth anytime you lose the job or if you want to visit, you know, keep your family and um, et cetera. That is going to be a hassle because that costs a lot of money. So now, me, I wanted to just go to a different African country and come right back in. But as you saw in my last video, this one right here, you can click that link and then come back to this one. Um, it was a hassle to come back in. So the visa process, getting the multi-entry visa, it's useless if you don't go all the way back home. And who has money to keep traveling all the way back home to the United States every 90 days? That's ridiculous. Even if it's every four months, because you can get an extension. Absolutely not. And um, the second thing is, okay, let's just say you don't mind doing that. Or you just want to go to Kenya and stay there longer than a couple of days. You got to stay there for like a week or two for them to think that you're exploring. You know, and you come back. Okay, so. Okay, so let's just say you're okay with doing that. Then you'll have to get a business and then apply for residency. Because you cannot apply for residency without a business. That's the crazy thing. That's crazy to me. So they basically hound you down to be a business partner in their land. And then let's just say you're okay with doing that, which I was okay. Now for you to buy land, unless you marry a Tanzanian man or woman, you cannot own land unless you have another Tanzanian on the land and getting a percentage. And you only get to keep the land for 99 years. That's weird. I don't like that. Yeah, let's get into the video. So the first thing that I didn't like is the immigration process. Um, when I went to Tanzania, I already imprinted it in my brain that you're allowed to, from the research that I've done, that you're allowed to have three months there and then get extensions which is a 30 day extension. It's supposed to be two 30 day extensions for free. But once I got to the immigration, they had us wait there for five hours after telling us they could give us that time period. And we only got two weeks. After waiting five hours, we got a two week extension. So I had to maneuver myself from there and um, it was just not pretty for me. I left the immigration office like literally in tears because I was just like, I just, it's just this, I pick up on vibrations and energy and it's just like the immigration people just, just felt like they don't want me here. You know, for whatever reason, whatever judgment they had of me, I don't think they want us as expats there. You know, and that's just the honest truth, you guys. Like, they were laughing at me while I was crying. Like, it was just not funny. Maybe it was just the immigration officers that I dealt with, but it was just like, okay, yeah. So I left in tears because, you know, I had been there for about a month. And at first, you know, it felt like Tanzania was gonna be good for me. But after, that was like, one of the first negative experiences for me there but um yeah i thought i could you know stay there a little bit longer just to feel it out now let me tell you guys i never ever ever had the um i had no expectations with coming to africa I, like i told you guys i had plans to move to ghana they changed their rules i don't like how their president moves so i decided to um, come over to uh, go to Tanzania and oh my said this little battery so you know as of going there um I dealt with so many that was the first negative experience and I was just like yeah uh, I don't know where to go from here and um, last minute I had an opportunity to go ahead and um, extend it even further but you know y'all know I was there for like six months
like I said, not not very exciting to hear. So these these brothers and sisters clearly are facing problems not of their own making generally, and uh, you know just just looking online, I have seen a number of these stories come up about individuals living country A, country B, country Z, and um, they are raising a problem that African countries are seemingly not paying attention to. Honestly, we are asking our brothers and sisters to come back home, invest, visit, uh, you know, do a pilgrimage to whatever country, whichever country, but we are not making their landing softer, we are not making their life in Africa any, any easier. That's, so that's disappointing. So not, not good news coming from us, I must say, guys. And uh, even in Kenya, for example, the current government started by making promises about an open door policy for Africans of diaspora and indeed Africans of the continent. The most recent news appears that this really is not the case as was intended. So the government has backtracked on this and those who have attempted to arrive or do any documentation then find, yes, apparently there is no visa policy, but there are other hidden costs which is quite unfortunate. So we've got to tell you this as it is so that you prepare yourself when you're traveling here. In Kenya's case, for example, you really have got to just go online and do your paperwork online. There will be scammers everywhere. In East Africa, I think Rwanda perhaps has the best policy and you need to check that in terms of the free visa regime in that country but Kenya is not the case it's not Tanzania the same I would have to check on Uganda but they've tended to have for the longest time a common visa for the East African community so that has worked for those who are blue passport holders Americans and other individuals from other countries. But immigration obviously is a big, big challenge if you're traveling here. So best to prepare in advance. Check out the local embassies that relate to these countries before you travel there. What do they have online in terms of visa applications so that you apply in advance? And if you are not applying in advance, that perhaps there can be the possibility of you getting a document on arrival, which was always the case with Kenya for a very long time, then it needs to be information that comes straight from the embassy so that you can travel with confidence. I've had instances where individuals that, for example, we are working with, traveling to the country, fail to get a certain document and only to be stuck at the airport for hours on end. So you really do not want to find yourself in this kind of difficult situation. Work with the relevant government, work with the relevant embassy to be on the safe side. The other stuff that obviously had a problem is to do with the scammers, okay? People will promise you heaven and not deliver even on a single item. So the embassy route, the government route is the best. Ensure you've got your paperwork. Last time, if you check one of the stories uh, we did about uh, two, three weeks ago, there was an African-American whose documents expired and he ended up in jail. He actually spent time in jail because of expired documents. These are not, this is not something I would wish for anyone much as uh, the prison conditions were not that bad for that particular country. But best to have your paperwork in place. Yeah? 
their frustration honestly. I did a story on Africa don't want us back and I captured that particular challenge that we are not doing enough as African countries to welcome you guys back and so for those of us who are here and you know from the content that we share here some of us are quite passionate about diaspora returning home enjoying the motherland this is where your roots are and you have a right except that African countries have not put in a policy that not only recognizes but appreciates that you are born from parents who came from this continent. So something should be given to you in terms of access to the continent that makes your life here enjoyable, you know, that makes your life here exciting. It's not heaven, no it's not, but it's roots and it's good for your own spirit to be able to enjoy your, your stay on the continent to invest if you wish to, if you can afford it, to relocate if you've got what it takes. There's an African-American, a New Yorker, who's lived in Namibia for 14 years. She found love on the continent, but she particularly came to the continent because from her childhood, she had connected with the issues of Africa and diaspora. And therefore, the, the story of Kaelan, for example, and you can check it out in the, in, the, in the description below, as well as there's a story I have done on that. The story of Kaelan is one powerful story about how to navigate the continent. There's Ashley in Africa, who has also lived in TZ, and now, very recently, moved to South Africa. Real good examples of stories that you can check out. Individuals who have found a way to make it work for them on the continent. The Freedom Chasers also lived in TZ. You know, like they've just said, they had their challenges there. So eventually it did not work for them. They moved to Kenya, lived in Kenya, and then onwards to South Africa. So between South Africa and Kenya, they figured perhaps because of the history that South Africa experienced, in terms of apartheid, that South Africa, the South African experience would make it easier for them to connect with South Africa. So that's what they've done. And look, I can see they're having a good time, you know. Um, and uh, for us who are in Nairobi, we still say this is home as well. So travel back, welcome back, forget the haters, man. Like I say, just, you know, the haters just put on a thick skin and armor and fight them off. But for the things that work, celebrate that. For the things that don't work, we must be candid enough to speak about them. You know, there's a Zulu saying that hands wash each other, which essentially is about working together as a family, correcting each other, and rebuilding ourselves. So Africa must do that. If TZ is not getting it right, if Kenya is not getting it right, South Africa, Ghana, whichever place, we have got to speak about these things to make Africa a much better place for us to live in. The immigration nightmare, honestly, for us is, is, quite, is quite disappointing. It's quite disappointing. And uh, content constantly on this topic will help. Wodemaya a while back also did a story on this topic and he actually got himself in a scaffold at the Ghana Togolese border. In that same scaffold, you had African Americans who had now gotten their Ghanaian passports, also going through another immigration nightmare. You know? So it appears that individuals in countries generally are at peace and enjoy welcoming their brothers and sisters coming from abroad. But governments, for some odd reason, are making life difficult, not just for visitors, even for their own citizens. Documents 
in these countries are difficult to obtain when you need to. Kenya right now is going through a serious problem of, you know, documentation in terms of just acquiring your passport on time. So you can imagine that on a very big scale, it's not citizens who have a problem with their brothers and sisters from the diaspora. It is governments that are making life difficult, both for visitors as well as locals. So we hope and we shall keep pushing through generating content to raise the challenge that we are facing internally and also raise the challenge that our own visitors are facing as they travel to Africa. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope you can share this story so that other brothers and sisters, wherever they are, can get to be aware of the challenges and prepare better for their travel. Key thing is get your documents early and always start off online and check out the experiences of those who have traveled to these countries. If you're looking at Kenya, you've got the residential tourists, you've got the freedom chasers who've been here. If you're looking at TZ, you've got Ashley in Africa, you've got as well the freedom chasers. Then if you're looking for an experience in Ghana, there is, there's a family that is also doing great work in Ghana, you know, expert life in Ghana. Great guys. I follow them and look at the content. I keep tabs. And they also offer tourism services. So that is legit. So coming from the US, Britain or whatever, and you can then connect with these individuals who have been on the ground, who have seen the lay of the land as it is, and have now invested and live on the continent, then perhaps that would give you a bit more confidence. And it's a place from which you can start. So share your thoughts in the comments section below. The challenges you face, we are more than happy to point you to some of the directions that you can get good guidance to be able to travel to Africa and enjoy your stay here without too much trouble. One other thing I was forgetting is, apart from the immigration problem, you also have the challenge of moving and moving with your staff to the continent, customs. Customs is also a big, big problem. They've not talked about it in detail, but the best way to deal with that is to try and only bring from wherever you live the one item that you believe you cannot do without and you must bring. For the rest of the stuff, like household items, electronics and stuff, that stuff is available, especially in Kenya, for example, in Ghana, in South Africa. So that is something you want to avoid to be able to minimize your cost of relocating to the motherland. If you are new here, do the magic, subscribe, ring the bell, and do like, because this goes a long way in helping us spread the message, create more content, and build this channel better. I know the, subscription, uh, the subscribers are still low, those who are watching us, more than 90% have not subscribed. So if you're subscribing now, I want to say thank you for taking your time, taking a moment to do that. This is Africa, our business. Let's make Africa work for us, work for you, wherever you are. We'll see you again on the next one.